When night falls here in Maryland County, Liberia, it is utterly dark. The only light comes from a few buildings that have their own generators. You can hear them rumbling through the night. The United Nations provides some street lights outside one of its buildings, so underneath it in the evening, people come together. They talk, play music, sometimes children do their homework. Their homes are dark, so this is their evening gathering place, this small pool of light in a world of darkness. Even by day, Harper City remains a dark place. Most of its buildings are now bombed out, burned out shells. This was once a modern gas station. Today, instead of pumps, men sell gasoline siphoned from jars. This building was once a car dealership. Back in Monrovia, on the capital city's highest hill, one building stands as a seven-story monument to how far Liberia has fallen. At first glance, the pictures are something we've seen before. Desperate refugees, poor, traumatized by war. But this place is different. It was once a five-star hotel run by a company called Intercontinental, which also operates a luxury hotel on Baltimore's Inner Harbor. Until 1990, this is how it looked. A sparkling pool, spotless rooms, endless views. This place used to be a very decent area of five-star hotel in Liberia, but now it is not functioning. 35-year-old Josh Logan lives on the fourth floor where shattered windows leave residents exposed to the weather and some families live more than 10 to a room. These are the rooms that you are seeing here now. And down is the swimming pool, former swimming pool. It is still a swimming pool, but people cannot swim there again. Right. And what was in mean, here? This was? Through the lobby entrance where dignitaries once arrived, Josh leads us inside. The elevators haven't worked in years, so we start up the stairwell and walk into the darkness of the hotel corridor. These were the hotel rooms. Real hotel rooms, yeah, 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 yeah. 106. One of seven. The rooms and the hallways are home to more than 1,500 people. Some of the children have known no other home. A resident named Linda offered to show us inside her room, number 110. 110. In what was a hotel guest room, Linda has boarded up the broken windows and improvised a small bed. She's 27 and has lived here since war came to her village in the countryside. Why did you come here? Because I never had anywhere to go. That's why I came here for. You know, the only place I had rescue. So this is why I am here. She lives without running water or electricity. In her bathroom, the toilet was looted in the war. It doesn't matter. The sewer doesn't work either. But for Linda, what's important is this room is safe. It offers shelter, and it is home. Just off the hotel's lobby, a scene that speaks to Liberia's desperation and determination. In what was once a grand reception area, children now study in a makeshift school, complete with desks and chalkboard. They want to be ready to work when normalcy finally returns. Our guide Josh attends the University of Liberia while he lives here, studying public administration and management. He says, though it's hard to believe, there's hope here. Yes, people have hope. You can't live without hope. A hopeless person go crazy. You are confused. But people here, though they are poor, condition is not fearing them, but they have hope that tomorrow there will be a change. Tomorrow, condition will improve for them. It's not easy to get to Maryland County, Liberia. There are no direct flights from America, so we go by way of Brussels, Belgium. It takes us two full days just to get into the country, landing here, Liberia's capital, Monrovia, named for American President James Monroe, an early supporter of colonization. Many of the city's residents are refugees of a civil war that just ended in 2003. About one million people live here. When you first arrive, it's a city that overwhelms the senses. It's difficult just to move around on these streets, choked with traffic and blasted by war. It's said that bumps in these roads aren't potholes, they're rocket craters. Maryland County is still more than 200 miles away from this capital city. Back home, that trip would take a few hours, but Liberia's roads get even worse outside Monrovia. 
The war left him so dilapidated that it would take two hard days to drive to Maryland County. So our only option, hitch a ride on a cargo helicopter run by the United Nations. They're here keeping the peace as Liberia recovers from the fighting. Inside, it's not exactly first class, and it smells like bread. We're hauling food for peacekeeping troops in Maryland County. Soon we're in the air, following the Atlantic coast south. For two hours, we stare out the open windows at some of the most stunning scenery I've seen anywhere on Earth. Mile after mile of untouched beaches and rainforest. As we descend, we calculate it's taken us six days to travel from Maryland to Maryland, and as we leave the helicopter, we realize these Marylanders have laid out the red carpet. We didn't expect to be the center of attention, but here we are, receiving the keys to the city and being shown Liberia's trademark handshake, ending with a snap of the fingers. Why all the excitement? They tell us we're the first American TV crew to visit Maryland County in at least 30 years. That devastating civil war has kept visitors away. 